Hey y'all, it's the Reverend. We're here with uh, one of our online extra features uh, for L2P. This one goes with the new issue that just came out. Hopefully you've uh, seen it online um, or have a copy in your grubby little mitts. Uh, we did the whole uh, issue on monitoring and uh, being able to hear yourself. And uh, what we're going to do right now is take a look at my setup for doing uh, for doing rehearsals with the band and being able to hear. I actually have two setups that, uh, that I use. And they, they serve two different purposes. Um, one of them is for big full band setups um, and it's just to be able to make, to make sure that everybody can really hear themselves. Um, and that's a different system. We'll do that as a second part of the video. And the other one is to be able to do smaller rehearsals in a very small compact space without making much noise. Um, sure a lot of you have the same situation. I don't have a room in the house that's dedicated to music. The room that we're in, although it looks like it's dedicated to music at first, if you pan around from the drum set to uh, um, the guitars and everything, and then, oh, there's a desk with the computer on it. This is also my home office. And there's, underneath all that crap, there's a futon. It doubles as a guest bedroom when necessary. And it's also where my bird sleeps at night. So, uh, you know, I have to get a lot of stuff into the small space. And we also live in a residential neighborhood. And uh, we don't want our neighbors, uh, neighbors, all right there, um, uh, you know, complaining. When we were in uh, California before I moved to Las Vegas, I spent thousands of dollars soundproofing a garage and turning it into a rehearsal space um, for a lot less money. Um, uh, we've got a situation here where we can do rehearsals right here in this small room. Now we only ever do maybe five to six pieces up here, tops, um, bass, drums, guitar, keyboards, um, uh, another guitarist, uh, acoustic guitar player who sings, and sometimes a percussionist who, uh, who sings as well. So um, uh, I've got a bunch of little mixers around um, and we honestly usually use one that's bigger than this, but I want to show you how you can do this with the least amount of equipment possible. So we're going with the smaller stuff. This is, uh, this is what you need if you want to be able to do a rehearsal without making much noise. First thing um, you're going to need is a little mixer. As you can see here, this is nothing fancy. This is a little Behringer. It was about, uh, I think this is a $150, maybe $160 mixer maximum. Okay, um, and You're going to need a way to uh, power headphones for everybody off of that, some kind of head distribution. In this case, we have the Aphex head pod. Uh, this is actually a really nice one. It's a little more expensive than some of them. Uh, I think this is $149. Uh, but you can get headphone and amps uh, out there. Actually, with more outputs than this, you can get them for under 100 bucks all day long um, without even going to eBay. But you can go to eBay, you can probably find one for $20, $30. Next thing you need is um, uh, something to hear with, and uh, we, uh, you know, I, I happen to have um, custom molded uh, in-ear monitors uh, from West Tone. Uh, these are the ES3X um, that they made to match my stage suit, which is pretty bitchin'. Um, for those in the band who don't have um, custom in-ears, uh, there are a couple of us who do. We both use West Tone. Um, uh, I have some of the. Uh, Futurasonics Atrio uh, Universal Fits, which work really nicely. Uh, they run a uh, list on these about $199. You can buy them for about $99 bucks a pair all day on eBay. And you don't even need anything like that. If you come right down to it, uh, there's a 20-year-old set of uh, Radio Shack headphones, which is all you really got to have. Um, well, how do you get to the headphones? You don't have wireless or anything. No, you don't. All you need is these handy-dandy little... Uh, headphone extenders like these. This is a 20 foot extension that plugs into the output whoops, of, the, uh, of the headphone amp. And I literally got most of the ones that I have at the 99 cent store. No lie. Even the ones I didn't get at the 99 cent store and when you average it out I didn't spend more than a couple bucks for any of them. Um, uh, and yes, I've asked every musician I work with to bring their own. Those of you who are band leaders know that it just ain't going to happen. I saw so I keep five or six of them around because, and I keep extra pairs of headphones and universal fits because 
inevitably somebody forgets. Okay, so how do you do this? Um, the first thing you need to do, know is that in order to accomplish this, you need to be able to run as many sources direct as is humanly possible. By direct, I mean going right into the mixer without going through a uh, loudspeaker or amplifier first. So, in order to do that, we have an electronic drum kit. Uh, this one happens to be uh, the Alesis DM Pro, which um, I like a lot, though there's a separate video up that's a review of this unit, so we won't get into that uh, right now. Uh, the sound for that is being provided by this old Macintosh uh, computer, really old, it's a G4, and uh, it comes out of that and goes into a uh, Rapco, uh, what's it's called is a laptop interface. Basically this is for a laptop or an iPod or anything else that you use and you being able to get it into a PA. If you have a PA system that you take on a live gigs and you don't have one of these, you need to go get one. Um, it makes a huge difference. Just ignore the ringing of the telephone, sorry. Um, okay, so electronic drums, uh, bass player who generally sits right here <laughs> by the bird's cage. Um, bass players are used to going direct a lot anyway um, and most good bass amps have a direct output. Um, the ba my two bass players, one of them just plugs his, his bass right into the mixer because it has a hot enough signal. The other bass player I use has a uh, bass pod from line six and he takes the output of that and sends it to the mixer. Okay, that takes care of bass and drums. Uh, keyboards, and there's a keyboard stand right there with no keyboards on it because we just did a, uh, a big rehearsal over the weekend with full band so the keyboards aren't set back up yet, but they go right into the stereo channels on the mixer, right, right easy. Um, the uh, the uh, drums also go into one of those sets of stereo channels eventually. Um, uh, so what does that leave us with? Vocals, well, you know, we have our microphones, they go into the mixer, um, uh, so that's easy. Guitars, unless it's an acoustic guitar, you know, it's it, it can be a problem, but I mean, I've been playing this uh, Line 6 uh, uh, spider valve for a long time now, for a little over a year, and it has a direct out that I think you can see right there, that XLR right there on the left hand side of the screen is a direct output um, that I use, and it works well. Um, if your amp does not have a direct out, you can get a direct box uh, that's specifically made for guitars. My personal favorite is the Radial JDX. Um, uh, it just works really, really well. Um, it's a no-brainer, really easy to do. Okay, we're running out of time, so uh, so what else do you need to know about doing this? It's, it make, it's, it's really very, very simple. You run everything direct. Guitar goes direct out from the amp into the mixer. The bass goes direct into the mixer. The drums, which are electronic, go direct into the mixer. Microphones go into the mixer just like they normally would. Keyboards go into the mixer like they would for most gigs. Everybody gets a little, uh, a little line out off of the headphone mixer and goes to their in-ears or um, uh, personal monitors or, uh, or even old-fashioned, old-style headphones. I had a drummer who you know, had a set of Bose noise-canceling headphones. That's all he ever wanted to use. He brought them. He used them. That was it. Um, uh, by doing this, when we're rehearsing, all you can hear is the thump of the pads on the uh, electronic drum kit, which is minimal, and um, uh, some singing, uh, because that's an acoustic source, and the acoustic guitar player, and that's it. It's, it's low enough volume that not only do we not have to, uh, sorry about that, not only do we not have to worry about the neighbors, my, uh, my wife and kid will sit upstairs and watch TV and not worry, not, they never complained about, you know, you guys need to turn it down or any of that. So anyway, that's the, uh, the small setup for silent rehearsals. And uh, we'll, we'll show you the big setup um, in another video. This is The Reverend, and I'm out.